And we're back for segment two. Again, this is Tom Collins with usaudios.com with my new best friend, Thomas Lloyd, CEO and founder of Top Mexico Real Estate here in beautiful Playa del Carmen, Mexico. If you didn't look at segment one, go back and look at that one first, but you could probably read look at this one by itself. They probably don't have to go in order. All right, let's touch on a couple of things. One of the reasons why a lot of people in Canada and the USA like to come down here is its proximity. Let's face it, if you're a retiree and your grandkids are coming with you, you might want to see them once in a while. Talk about some of your back and forth and maybe the people you know, how that's worked out. And I know we have a great international airport. Yes. Actually, Tom, that's uh, something a lot of people overlook or they don't take into consideration when they're looking for a place to, yeah. to, to retire to, especially in another country. And that's a huge, that's probably um, number one factor of Quintana Roo in the region is um, the ease of the airport. Mm -hmm. um, it's so important because, as you know, you have your grandkids, all of a sudden you want to go back and see that baseball game or you want to go back and Christmas. get a birthday, yeah. and Christmas, off wedding, and Thanksgiving, yeah. etc. Plus, they love coming down here. That's great to be living down here. Let's hope so. And the kids want to come down to visit because you have all types of uh, attractions for the kids. You know, right. We can talk about that. Mm -hmm. But in regards to the logistics, Cancun is the second busiest airport in all of Mexico. I read that. And they have, um, right now they have three terminals. They just opened the fourth terminal. And it's amazing the volume of traffic that they're having here. Now, why is that important? It's not that we're looking for volume of traffic, but when you're going back to Chicago, or if you have to go to San Francisco, Las Vegas, New York, you have a lot of options and you also have a lot of obviously with options mm -hmm. you have a lot of rates to choose from so the airport's very nice too yes it's it is. modern um, all the conveniences are there they have a united club which we usually frequent just go and sit in there everything's free they have some crazy shaped lounge chairs which are so comfortable you almost miss your flight but it is a very nice airport with lots of restaurants and if you want to do some last minute shopping they even have that crazy duty free in there. Every time I go through there, I call her and say, how about this, uh, what is that purse I was talking about? She did, Lochon, I can't even say it. Folds up into the piece like this big and then becomes this giant bag. Oh, yeah, and I said, what do you think of this? She said, nah, I'm, that's okay. That's funny that you told your wife about that. I tried to distract her. <laughs> no, no, no. But they make you walk right through there, you know? <laughs> so, I don't know, I, she turned me down. That's why we've been married 23 years. She doesn't ask me for things like that too much. We touched on something uh, during the break about senior communities or adults only communities for 50, 55 plus. Anything like that on the horizon? You know, there are not many, but they are coming. Um, first, there is a project that we did, the, mm -hmm. the developers, not a project, it was, it's not a community. It was a smaller, there was like single family house project. They had, I think, um, like 12 or 14 lots, and they needed help or some kind of a strategy on how to better market the, the oh, no. unit. We're still filming, so mm -hmm. go ahead. <laughs> Little power outage here, folks. See if you can see us. You can probably hear us. <laughs> this is part of some of the things of living in Mexico are unexpected. Do you want to cut during this or do you want to keep going? It's up to you. You know what? This, can you see our faces? A little bit? Can I just see you? Kind of? <laughs> Alright, we'll go ahead and cut right here. Okay, we'll pick up for a minute until they bring it back on. Do you got a phone or something you can see? I can tell. No. Run into it. There you go. We're back after a quick break. We were going to touch on um, senior communities, I believe it was. Yes. 50, 55 plus, adults only, no kids, retirees kind of like that. My mother was in one and I visited her often and I thought I could live here. This is kind of nice. Anything like that on the horizon? On the horizon, yes. I'm okay. excited. Um, I'd love to keep you updated, but we're working on a project that it's specifically that, mm -hmm. 55 plus. Um, a lot of like people. We find that, I mean, that's fun to be moving, especially going to another country. Yeah. And it's good to have neighbors, everybody wanting to, same hobbies or wanting to. It becomes visit. a community. Yes. It really exactly. does. Tighten a community, secure. Everything tends to run like Disneyland. It's all clean and perfect. Yeah. And that's how 55 and above wants it. I know this because that's how my mother demanded it. <laughs> and again, I visit her and I loved it. So, any idea when that might break ground, this project? You know, we're actually. Um, I'm hoping that we can be launching, introducing, or coming out to renderings and introducing the community about December, right before January, January, February. Stay in touch. We'd love to help you launch some of that on the web. Great. Okay. 
couple of real hard hitting questions here that I get nailed with all the time and perhaps you could explain it better than I can with my limited experience. The property we own right now is the first one and you've done thousands I'm sure. Um, it's this. Americans especially always ask me, is it really possible to own property in Mexico? Can we talk about the legal ownership of real estate for foreigners? Okay. Yes, definitely for Americans, Canadians, and any foreigners. Um, basically, if we have a map, you can see Mexico, there's a place called the Restricted Zone, and the Restricted Zone is 50 kilometers from the, the beachfront, or the border, like U.S. and Mexican border, there's 50 kilometers, or 100 kilometers on the border, and 50 kilometers on the beach. In that zone, if you buy property there, you can still own it, you, own, you have the property legally, you set it up through a bank trust. Um, so that's the only difference of owning property up in the States of Canada. Now, if you're buying within the central part of Mexico, it's a street, a street, you know, fee title, simple. fee simple. So the bank trust, some of the issues, of the, not issues, but some of the factors of the bank trust, actually there's a lot of benefits in it because one of the benefits most that attracts me is that if I were to pass away, you can also list out your beneficiaries mm -hmm. on there and that's a quick automatic process within 24 hours that property now becomes a legal ownership of whoever you inherited or whoever you pass on that property right. to. We, we set ours up that way because we're not 50 kilometers but we're pretty close right. to the beach. We're not on the beach but we're close and I believe we set up our son as our sole heir. There you go. Um, I guess some Americans also will ask do you need to hire an attorney to buy in, in Mexico. Is that advised or do you use a title company like in California? Okay, do you need to own uh, or to hire a lawyer? We always recommend it. Okay. You know, it's always good to have that legal expert looking over the contracts on your behalf. Um, in our team here, we always, we always have about three or four different lawyers that we introduce and recommend. And uh, it's, is it legally, do you need one? No. But good idea. It's a great idea to have. We one. did. Yes. We did that and we also used the professional notary company to make sure everything was written correctly and fortunately we haven't had any problems. Go ahead. Uh, Very good. Uh, let's see. What are your thoughts on residency? Let's switch gears really quickly. Not just the house. Let's talk about the occupants of the house. As a lot of people may or may not understand, you have 180 days as a visitor, which is the time window in which you can legally stay as a quote unquote visitor. If you want to stay longer than that without leaving and getting your passport stamped to come back in which is the necessary, what do they call that, but the passport stamp trip or something. Right. Do you recommend that you actually get the residency or even apply for citizenship? Yes, I recommend that, especially if you're living, like you guys, you should, once you get down here, or even start the process while you're still up in California, mm -hmm. uh, start the process of getting your temporary. There's basically two options, the temporary or the permanent. And with the temporary, basically, some of the big benefits of having a, a a temporary identification there is you, when you go to sell your house there's some exemption of taxes that you can qualify for. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Save me some money on taxes any day Tom. Yeah, absolutely. So that's a, a factor number one. Two, to, set it, to open up a bank account it's a lot easier to set right. it up with your permanent residence card and even purchasing a car if you're looking to buy a car mm -hmm. down here. So just those three things it makes it worth the while. We're going to do a vlog on that uh, that process before we leave. As long as you have the 30-day window, you you get it done within 30 days, you travel in that window, and then you must come down here to your offices, your legal offices, and get the paperwork finished. So it's like you start it at home, you finish it here, and I believe you must stay here for at least 30 days for it to take place. But again, we're going to do a whole chapter on that later, and well, I'll let you know how it goes because gonna be we're going to go to residency. Very interesting. I'll, I'll be for sure to follow that. Absolutely. Now another thing, I'm a writer, you're a writer. I've seen you have a lot of free ebooks that you offer to people yes. on basic, lots of different topics about buying real estate and some other things. Yes. Yes, we do. We have a lot of different books. Uh, we even have a thing called a book that's, um, it's, a, it's a book, but we do a video type with it too for those people who addicted to looking at YouTube and like of reading me. and myself <laughs> as well. So there's um, a lot of good information on there that we put together. Um, we have a land page, so maybe later we can share that land page and all types of topics from owning real estate, different tips of living here in Mexico. And 
And of course, we'll put the links. We'll put the links to your site and any other that you want on the video, so people can quickly access those yeah. things. Because I found them very useful. I right. used some of your eBooks. Well, they were free, right? Why not? <laughs> um, fees. Let's talk about that. Do real estate agencies down here charge similar fees to the U.S.? Typically, it's six percent to the age for the agency fee plus everything else. In the Bahamas, the total out the door fee to buy our condo was twenty percent. Half a million dollar condo, hundred thousand dollars in fees. Very high. What's it like down here? Yeah, for the seller, if you're selling, the fees they do run a rough six to seven percent. Um, that's we pay in nine in Belize. Okay, but it's a resort island, and exactly. they can do that. And in Baja California, it depends on the zone and right. all of Mexico. Baja California, they also their average about nine or ten. Mm -hmm. Here, in, yeah, I repeat, here in Quintana Roo, it's about six, seven. Mm -hmm. Some other places, you know, they even go to four to five percent. So California, we had a real estate agent talking to us about our home, and typically it was six, but he immediately discounted it to five. So there's some negotiation going on where we're from. We got a little bit of time left here, so let's just talk a little bit about two things. Um, gosh, what if I wanted to be a realtor and work for a company like Top Mexico down here? What type of residency would I need? Would I need the not the limited, but or is it the general? The temporary. Temporary. Okay. So that'll allow you to work, own a home, drive a car, open a bank account, and work. Key things if you want to stay down here for a long time. And the last thing I want to ask you is, you know, there's a lot of real estate companies in this area, the Mayan Riviera. Why would someone want to choose Top Mexico besides everything we've said right here? What have we missed? Why to choose? Why choose Top Mexico out of all the other options? Well, one basically, I think, is just our experience. You know, our team was brought up to really focus on the buyers. We have a team, a very solid team, buyers reps. Um, we do a lot of training, we extensive training. In fact, we've been invited by an association here in Quintana Roo to start helping them train the rest of the market. So we, again, we invest a lot of time and money on the training of our people and really stress them to represent the buyers. Um, a lot of us have been taking the course called the Accredited Buyers Representative. Okay. So we're going through the process of several of the people on our team to get that license. The most important, of course, I said three times about the training. Um, and your experience, you've, you've been doing this for what, 22 years? You've been down here, so you're yes. very familiar with the area, the culture, the rules, the laws. But how long, when did you, when did you guys begin as Top Mexico? How long? We, we served at Top Mexico about 12, 13 years ago. Okay, so you've been here for a while. We've been doing it a long time, okay. yes. And again, like what we said, I was the first person in all of Mexico right. to, to you know, focus study. I wasn't the only one, but I was the first one to get the, the license, the national license. Can't take that from you. No, <laughs> You're the first. That's it. And it probably hundreds, it. maybe thousands since then have done that. Yes, today, yeah, I would say I don't know exactly the statistics. At that time, that first exam, there's only three people in all of Mexico that were able to pass that exam and get that license. So it is a tough. Very, I sweated through it. It was a long time. I'm sweating now. <laughs> Just thinking about it. You so, know what? We're going to go ahead and wrap this up in the interest of time. He's got a, a webinar to do. I want to thank you so much for uh, inviting us into your beautiful offices. We're going to film the offices and show you what this place looks like. It's amazing and it's easy to find. Even someone like me uh, using software in the car and listening to my wife at the same time still found it. So that's good. I want to give you one of these hats right here. That's for you. Thank you. And we're going to go ahead and close right now. Again, this it has been Top Mexico Real Estate Top with Mexico Thomas Estate. Lloyd. I'm your host, Tom Collins. Betty's over there. Come say hi for a second. No, she won't do it. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and sign off right now. Check out usaudios.com, Top Mexico Real Estate.